Ocean Waves, the only direct-to-television movie from the legendary studio Ghibli, debuted on Nippon TV in the spring of 1993. Being the first Ghibli film not to be directed by Hayao Miyazaki or Isao Takahata, this project signalled a springtime of its own for the studio. Entrusted instead to the youngest members of the picture house, a fresh-faced team who would go on to pour themselves into a work that spoke to those tumultuous years between childhood and adulthood, years they had only just left behind themselves. Their mission statement was simple, to produce a work quickly, on a budget, and with that familiar Ghibli seal of quality. They would only go on to achieve one of those goals. But what an achievement it was. Your first time with any Studio Ghibli flick tends to be a memorable event. For a great deal of that acclaimed library, I vividly remember exactly where I was, who I was with and how those films made me feel during that first trip into the worlds beyond the screen. Like many anime fans of the era, I began my journey by devouring anything I could find from the studio, and ten years after its debut at home, I managed to get my hands on a copy of Ocean Waves, and I devoured that too. It became one of my most memorable first viewings of the Ghibli Pantheon, but for all the wrong reasons. At the same age as its teenage leads, I distinctly remember my disappointment as the runtime of Ocean Waves ticked by, giving up hope that the familiar Ghibli magic would finally surface. Racing to it from the highs of Miyazaki's fantastical escapism, from a portfolio of works that asked me to look back to the wonders of childhood, rather than look forward to the mundanity of adulthood. The reality of Ocean Waves left me cold. Ocean Waves focuses on a class reunion, interweaving the nervous excitement of the present with the nostalgic faces of the past. Whilst the movie is largely based in flashbacks of their school days, the present offers a chance for these players to re-evaluate things they thought they knew, to see their friends and enemies in a new light, and to rethink their relationships going forwards. It's wonderfully fitting then, that when I finally reunited with the one Ghibli movie I had never liked, nearly 20 years later, I too found myself re-evaluating it. As a truly different person than the one that had originally sat down with it all those years before, I fell in love. At first blush, Ocean Waves can feel cynical towards its teenage leads. The childish conceit we all fall victim to, that everything matters during those formative years, that anything matters in fact, is instantly recontextualized as immature by the film's framing, a reunion just a few years later, full of wholly different people. In those years, our attitudes shift. The actions we thought important proved to have little consequence, and the people we thought we knew change in a blink and you'll miss it moment. Perhaps, as part of that childish group on my first watch, I felt unjustly targeted by this seemingly patronizing viewpoint. A viewpoint that saw us caught up in nonsensical drama, whilst the real world happened around us. Now, older myself and a pinch more cynical, I see the film differently. Ocean Wave's view of school days and youth is wonderfully nostalgic and hopelessly romantic, painting a world that seems to stretch into forever, full of nothing but possibility. It doesn't seek to belittle its characters, but instead lift them up, to zero in on moments of freedom and excitement and promise that occur less frequently as the years go by and adult responsibility piles up. A spur-of-the-moment trip with a girl. A decision to move to a new city. Confessing to the one you love and it feeling like the end of the world when you're shot down. And a fair share of exciting, heartbreaking, but ultimately unimportant drama. There's a lightness of touch here that gently pries at your own hazy summer memories, full of moments that make you smile, and moments that make you cringe. Moments where childhood begins to pull away, and the adult you're about to become slides into focus. Today, I can't see the jibes and sneers I imagined by a team critical of the childhood they've left behind, but instead a tale of loving compassion. For the rough times we all have to endure, before we can ever realise they weren't all that rough. 
If anything, Ocean Waves feels like a group of animators, of storytellers, having just left those moments behind themselves, wanting to reach into the frame and shake their characters, to shout at them, to get them to understand how great they've got it and realise they're in the good old days, before they've left them. Maybe in doing so, they can capture a bit of that magic for themselves and offer a bit of it to their audience in the process. I was disappointed by the lack of that fantastical Ghibli charm when I first sat down with Ocean Waves, not realising that I too was being shook by the film, to understand how good and easy I had it, to worry less, to enjoy it all whilst it lasted. But like the leads of the movie, it's an impossible concept to grasp until those days have long slipped through your fingers. That magic is here in full. I just couldn't see it yet. Watching Ocean Waves for the first time in nearly two decades, I realised quickly that this wasn't a second chance for the movie. It's a picture that is as good today as it was when it first aired, over schedule and over budget, to a nation of people excited to see what the youth of Studio Ghibli could achieve. No, Ocean Waves didn't need a second chance. I did. As always, thanks for watching. When the Ghibli Netflix deal went through and their library began rolling out on the service, I knew I had to give Ocean Waves another chance. I've thought about this film for years without ever revisiting it, and before I'd even press play on my second viewing, I think I already knew that my opinion had changed. Watching it, and loving it, lit a fire in me and I just had to get this video out, to tell anybody who had written it off in a similar manner to go back and try again. My next video might take some time, so until then you can follow me over on Twitter or subscribe here on YouTube to be kept in the loop. If, instead, you think I was wrong and 15 year old Joe was right about Ocean Waves being a doo-doo film for doo-doo people, hit the like button and I'll let him run the channel from now on. Liz and the Blue Bird takes place in the aftermath of one such tale. With him I'm subscribed. I'm not subscribed.